All right, here we go with part two of what looks like will be three series of three videos on converting repeating decimals into fractions. On part one, we worked on single digits and established an algorithm. On this one, we're going to work on double digits and see if we can use that same strategy to get an algorithm or a repeating way of doing things, a formula, if you will. And of course, this time I'm using lots of pretty colors. I got green, yellow, purple, red. Yeah, so that's going to keep your attention this time. Watch out. First of all, here's a double digit repeating decimal. The vinculum is right there. It's my favorite word when it comes to these problems. The vinculum just tells you everything under it repeats infinitely. So the four or five with the vinculum simply means those four or five pairs are going to keep going forever. Okay? So much so that we needed a symbol to uh, be able to summarize that so we don't spend forever writing it. Here's how we're going to solve this one. If you saw the first video, this should make a lot of sense. If you didn't, uh, you should go check it out. First of all, we're going to set x equal to this repeating decimal. Then, remember on the first video we did uh, both sides we multiplied by 10, both sides times 10. Is that going to work here? No. Why? Because we have two decimal places, right? We have hundredths. Two decimal places. We have the tenths and the hundredths. So both sides by 100 will get it done this time. Yes. So when I multiply both sides by 100, hundred, what that really does with this, with our decimal, is it moves it over to the right two spots. And we will still have the repeating four five. Just multiplied by a hundred, no big deal. Okay. Next, since our goal here is to eliminate the repeating part so we can deal with whole numbers and therefore uh, create a fraction, it looks like uh, I want to take away x from both sides because this is x right here, the repeating 4, 5. So I'm going to take away the repeating 4, 5. Remember, we set them equal up here. That gives me the right to, even though they look different, they equal the same thing. So essentially, I'm taking the same thing away from both sides, which is essential to keeping an equation balanced. If the sides become imbalanced, it's no longer an equation. That leaves me with 99x over there and 45, nice and clean, over here. If I divide both sides by the coefficient of x, which is a standard uh, work backwards approach to uh, getting rid of a coefficient or isolating the variable, there's what we have, 45 99 now, sometimes on these, not all the time, but sometimes you can simplify. On this one, yes, I can tell that 9 is going to go into both, right? I can divide top and bottom by 9. What I end up with is 5 elevenths, okay? So just solving it, I know that's a sense of relief, and you think, whoo, I'm done. But always check it out and ask yourself, can I simplify this? Can I reduce that? And in this case, the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer will be no, but you should always check it out. All right, so that's double digits. Let's uh, give you a practice one here. How about you do this one? 72 hundredths repeating. Okay, here's your practice problem. Pause the video, go ahead and do that using the example we just did, and uh, see what you come up with. I'll join you in a minute. Go! Welcome back. I'm going to stick with red here. All right, so a little bit of practice. I'm going to follow all the same steps over here. Once you do this a couple of times, you notice a pattern will come up with an algorithm. First of all, 
we're just going to uh, set X equal to our repeating decimal. We've got hundredths, right? Two place values, that's key here. Hundredths, which means I'm gonna times both sides by 100. So on one side, I gotta squeeze it together here, sorry. 100X equals 72 and 72 hundredths, repeating. Beautiful. Next, we want to take away X from both sides. Remember, since X and the repeating decimal are equal to each other, I can remove both, right? They're equal. So even though it looks like I'm taking away different things from each side, I'm taking away same things because they're the same up here. That says so. Woo. Equal sign means same. Anyway, you knew that. You knew that. You don't need me to repeat that 15 times. 99x equals 72. We're just repeating the steps that happened over here. No big deal. No surprises. Hopefully that's what you did when you practiced this. I get 72 99ths. Can I simplify this? Yes. If you know your math facts, your multiplication table from way back in the day, we know that 9 goes into both of these. All right, if I divide the top, 9 times 8 is 72. And 9 times 11 is 99. So, 8 elevenths does the job. Right away, I see a pattern here. I see both of these answers have 11. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. Interesting. Something else I notice, you could test this out. We don't have time in this video to do it try to keep them short but look at this 4 plus 5 equals the number I used to simplify hmm did we just discover something here maybe I don't know because over here look 7 plus 2 the two numbers contained in our repeating decimal ended up being the factor that I used to simplify. Is this going to work every time? Is that how this works? I don't know. You figure that out. Let me know. Send me a message. Make your own video. Okay. Here, I'm going to give you a few problems to practice. <clears throat> okay? Practice time. I'm going to start, I'm going to have two easy ones. Oh, wait. No, it's algorithm time. Mr. Witcher, you're so disorganized. Well, to me it's organized. Here we go. So we just had these two problems. And what we want to do is come up with is there a set way, based on just observing these things, that we can have an algorithm? Well, let's look. What we ended up with on the top of our fractions, before it was simplified, what we ended up with on top, before it was reduced or simplified, very important, woo, was uh, 45 which that's the number that repeated up here. So our algorithm is going to be this. The repeating set goes on the top, right? Because we see it in both cases. On the bottom, what do we get? Place value minus 1. So, for example, up above we had the 4 or 5 repeating. If we follow this algorithm, the repeating set is 45. The place value was the hundredths. Take away 1. That was our answer. And look how much faster that is. Okay? Now, if we compare that to our... Uh, doo -doo -doo, to our final answers from the video, the previous video... Look, the algorithm is the same. It's whatever the place value is, minus 1. 
you put the repeating number on the top. The first video is a single digit. This video, it's double digit, but the algorithm is the same. Okay. Hey, you know what? That's the 10 minute mark. That's enough. That is enough. I'll make another video that has some practice problems on this and uh, so we can take our time and go over the answers. Thank you for watching. Hope this makes sense. Hope it helps you in your class.